So we have noticed in your machine shops uh, that uh, there is a friction while operating with the uh, work pieces especially you are doing some operations with the lathe or a milling machine or any other cutting machines where uh, there will be a huge amount of friction is between the two rubbing surfaces that is between the workpiece and the cutting tool so so in order to avoid this friction or the heat generated uh, between the two rubbing surfaces uh, we use a, a a material or a substance called lubricant so so application of this lubricant in order to avoid the friction is called lubric lubrication or in other words it is a science of reducing friction by application of suitable substance nothing but a lubricant between the two rubbing surfaces of bodies having a relative motion so it is always between the two moving uh, surfaces so what is the objective of this lubrication is nothing but to reduce the friction to reduce the wear and tear between the rubbing surfaces to carry away the heat generated uh, because of this friction and also the avoiding the corrosion between the two surfaces so what is the necessity of a lubricant as we all seen no? it's because of the friction wear and tear temperature getting increased because of the friction so what is the necessity of lubrication obviously uh, it has to reduce the friction between the moving surfaces as well as the wear and tear because of this friction what happens is there is a waste of energy in terms of uh, friction uh, and it consumes uh, most of the energy of the machine uh, wear causes changes in the dimension so whatever the material i have with the proper dimension due to wear and tear the material or the machine component dimensions will change ultimately it will uh, lead to the breakdown of the machine then so because of this wear and tear we need to replace the parts uh, then we have you can see here large amount of material is wasted uh as a powder or in some other way uh, due to its wear and tear and if some of the machine components made up of antimony zinc titanium vanadium iron carbon copper aluminium so over a period of time it's all become a waste so as a powder or some other way to conserve these natural resources we have to reduce the wear so nothing but we need to avoid friction so in order to avoid friction we need to go for a lubrication coming to the type of lubricants we have liquid lubricants so where it has to be retained these liquid lubricant has to be retained in some of the machines we use mineral oil or vegetable oil the next is the semi liquid so we have all seen uh, grease so it is all higher viscous soil where there should be a, a slow and heavy pressure exist and oil should not drip from the bearing so in such cases we use a semi liquid lubricant third is a solid lubricant where uh, oil film should not be uh, cannot be maintained i mean to say so because of the temperature or pressure so what happens is that the regions where uh, 
temperature is very low maybe around 5 10 degrees uh, celsius where you cannot maintain either liquid or a semi liquid so in such cases we go for a solid lubricant like wax graphite mica soapstone etc so what are the properties of a lubricant so you all seen these points uh, in previous slides where we are looking at the viscosity so degree of fluidity nothing but have degree of fluidity of a liquid so it's a property of fluid by virtue of it it offers resistance to the motion between the moving parts so that is one thing viscosity low or high uh, decides the its applications oilness uh, next is oilness nothing but ability of an oil to maintain unbroken lubricant film between the rubbing surfaces so some cases we require unbroken film next is a flash point we all studied these in our labs so it is a momentary flash or a vapor for which there is a momentary flash from the lubricant next is a fire point uh, because of the temperature vapor to burn continuously uh, get when ignited so so vapor gets burnt uh, next is a pour point the oil stops or ceases to flow temperature so especially at uh, low temperature regions this is required next is a viscosity index is a number which denotes uh, variation in the viscosity with the temperature anyway we'll come to the selection uh, depends on the relative speed or speed the two moving surfaces what uh, temperature the lubricant will be operating temperature what pressure will be maintained between the two surfaces maybe it is a closed surface operating atmosphere of the bearing and what way you apply these lubricants and uh, what is the frictional losses allowed okay between the two members so these are the things which will decide the selection of a lubricant next is the requirement of a good lubricant what are the uh, requirement from a good lubricant so as we all see in some of the points sufficient uh, viscosity it has to flow between sometimes uh, next is uh, high flash and fire point so it should not catch fire because of the friction chemical stability against oxidation so most of the times uh, it oxidizes. Uh, so uh, environment has some effect on the lubricant it should not be volatile it should not be corrosive uh, easy fluidity at low temperature so these are some of the properties expected so how the modes of lubrication will be uh, we have two main thick film and thin film lubrication thick film lubrication is uh, uh, we maintain a, a fluid film thick film between the two surfaces so resistance to relative motion arises from the viscous resistance of the fluid therefore viscosity of the lubricant affect the performance of bearing so in the thick film you will be maintaining the sufficient thickness of the fluid or the film we call it as next is uh, thin film lubrication so you as the name itself will tell you it is you are maintaining a thin film of a lubricant or a fluid uh, during the lubrication so it's called boundary lubrication the lubricant film is relatively thin there is a partial metal to metal contact as well so obviously because of the thin film there is a metal to metal contact between the two moving surfaces um, thick film lubrication is further divided into hydrodynamic then hydrostatic so, so hydrodynamic comes under thick film 
it is defined as a system of lubrication in which load supporting fluid film is created by the shape and relative motion of the sliding su surfaces so so there, there should be high pressure will be maintained between the two uh, su sliding surfaces okay next is a hydrostatic so it is defined as a system of lubrication in which load supporting film separating the two surfaces created by external source like pump supplying the sufficient fluid under the pressure so it will be hydrostatic will be by the external pressure maintained by external source whereas in the hydrodynamic um, it is within the internal pressure will be maintained so types of sliding lubrication hydrodynamic we have seen orthic film lubrication or fluid film film lubrication so we all discussed this is metal to metal contact is prevented by using the thick uh, film friction in the bearing is due to oil film friction only so since it is a thick film so obviously there is a friction between the layers of the oil film viscosity of the lubricant plays a vital role in the power loss temperature rise flow through the lubricant through the bearing since there is a since there is no metal to metal contact uh, it's all about the fluid that is maintained between the two uh, moving surfaces so as we have discussed it's all because of hydrodynamic theory this lubrication can exist under a moderately loaded bearing running at sufficiently high speed so so when there is a highly highly moving i mean to say high speed bearings this type of hydrodynamic lubrication is required next is high boundary lubrication or we have uh, something discussed about thin film lubrication where we maintain the pressure by external source so this is during the starting and stopping uh, when the velocity is too low the oil is not capable of supporting the load so there will be a metal to metal contact at some points or some spots i mean to say uh, during the operation that is during the starting and stopping the film pressure will not be maintained so at that time uh, this kind of uh, boundary lubrication is required or the thin film lubrication is required once it picks up the speed then this kind of lubrication is not required uh, boundary lubrication exists also in bearing if the load becomes too high or if viscosity of the lubricant is too low mechanical and chemical properties of the bearing surfaces and the lubricant play a vital role coming to the hydrostatic lubrication so we all discuss this we maintain external source for pressurizing the fluid or maintain a fluid film between the two moving surfaces which supports the load actually so that is a one thing which is so you will be continuously supplying the uh, fluid pressure to maintain the load through fluid so unlike in the hydrodynamic lubrication this kind of lubrication does not require motion of one surface relative to another i mean to say there should not be any moving surface to maintain this hydrostatic hydrostatic where there need not be any moving surface to maintain the uh, pressure that is because of its uh, motion the pressure will be maintained coming to the third point useful in designing bearings where the velocities are small and where the frictional resistance to be a, an absolute minimum so in such cases we go for the hydrostatic lubrication next is elasto hydrodynamic lubrication so you all know hydrodynamic lubrication because of this pressure uh, maintained between the moving surface there is a chance of uh, 
materials or the metal undergoing elastic deflection so because of this pressure there will be chance of elastic deflection of the contacting surfaces or the moving surfaces so due to high pressure maintained due to hydrodynamic kind of lubrication so this usually happens in uh, uh, rolling contacts or mating gears or rolling bearings cam and follower type of uh, machine parts so which will be explained by artesian theory of contact stresses and fluid mechanics so next is extreme boundary lubrication so we all seen this uh, due to high pressure it as shown in the figure if there is a uh, high temperature or increase in the temperature between the two surfaces that will lead to a strong intermolecular force at the point of contact at some of the points okay so that will lead to that will lead to the destruction of both or one of the surfaces contact surfaces so this will lead to the ploughing of the surfaces or it will be cut or the irregular surfaces will be created at the point of contacts so at this time bearing material properties are very much significant what uh, hardness you maintain for the material all other properties are very much essential in case of extreme boundary lubrication is the hydrodynamic lubrication in general bearing so how this will work in general bearing lubrication so as you can see in the figure the first figure a where initially surface of the bearing and the journal are touching each other and it is at the rest position okay so it is both will be touching at the rest position second is just starts rotating where journal starts to rotate so it will you can see in this it is rotating in the clockwise sense journey so it will climb the bearing surface uh, so once it picks up the speed so what happens is fluid is forced into the wedge surface shaped clearance of the space so you have a space between the journal and the surface so so oil gets spilled up in between the two gap so this clearance will be filled next what happens is the figure d where it will not be touching the journal and the external surface it will not be touching and this gap will be maintained by the fluid film so in such kind of uh, due to speed such kind of uh, um, lubrication is maintained that is nothing but hydrodynamic lubrication is maintained in the journal bearing 